What's the biggest double life you've ever personally seen revealed? Story 1. I served in the Navy from 1985 to 2005. While in my first squadron from 1985 to 1989, we were away from home often, either on short detachments of two to five weeks or six-month deployments. During one period when we were at home for a while, I was on watch in the duty office after hours. Me and another guy just had to man the office, answer the phone, and monitor the guys on watch down in the hangar bay. Shortly after our watch started, we got a phone call from the wife of someone in our squadron. She was asking us when the squadron would be back from detachment. I asked the other guy if he knew about anybody out on debt, and he just looked at me funny. I told her we didn't currently have anyone on debt. We've all been back home for a couple months. She insisted her husband had been out on debt for three weeks and needed to know when he was coming home. I assured her nobody was on debt and told her that I had seen her husband earlier that day at work. She just hung up after that. Turns out the guy was telling his wife he was out on debt and shacking up with his girlfriend for a few weeks. She called the commanding officer to find out when her husband had been part of a detachment and found out he'd done it many times over the previous couple years. Infidelity is officially against the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It didn't turn out well for him. As pointed out, it's adultery, not infidelity. That is against the UCMJ, and there does, in fact, have to be evidence or a confession of actual intercourse. In this case, the guy admitted to everything. He went to Captain's Mast. I don't remember exactly what his punishment was, though. I don't think he got kicked out. Probably a reduction in pay grade, restriction for several months, and half pay for several months. And a divorce, I'm sure. Additionally, I had no idea what he was doing at the time his wife called. I thought maybe she was pranking me out of something. I probably still wouldn't have covered for him, as some have suggested. He didn't deserve that anyway, and screw anybody saying I should have helped him get away with that stuff. Uh, I'm pretty confident my dad has told me the exact same story, who was also in the Navy for the same time frame. He told me that on another occasion, different guy I believe, the squadron met up for a party and this guy's wife came up to my dad. She said she had a bone to pick with him because my dad kept putting this guy on to fly nights on Fridays and weekends. My dad worked in skeds at the time. She confronted him pretty aggressively, and my dad told her he hasn't been scheduling him for weekends, and that this guy had been sniffing out Friday to Sunday. She turned ghostly white, changed her tone, and left the party. My dad pieced together what had happened right after the confrontation. My dad also knew someone in his squadron who cheated on his wife when they would get deployed. Sadly, the wife didn't find out until OSI showed at her door one day. Story 2 so when I first left home in my late teens, I shared a big house, I think over six bedrooms, with a close friend, his brother, and some other randos. Think frat house, except no college or university. Splitting the expenses worked out pretty well, so one of the guys worked at a port in customs or something. He had a uniform and ID, etc. Left for work at the same time every morning and hung out with us after work. He was always down for attending social events with us, and most of us liked him. Fast forward about a year, and he starts telling us about how he can get us discounted TVs and other merchandise from the port, unclaimed or seized property that apparently no one sweats about if just a few items go astray. Everyone gave it a pass, as it seems sketchy. Then one day we come home to one of our housemates in shock and bawling like a baby. Turns out, not only did he give the guy his life savings, he also gave him money borrowed from his dad. The customs guy had said he could get him a new car cheap. The long, long con. Turns out the guy doesn't work at the port, the name he gave us doesn't exist, and we have no idea how he spent his days or came up with his share of the rent and bills. Still creeps me out a little knowing I lived with a stranger for so long. I lived in a house just like that, with a guy who said his parents were recently deceased. He cried about them a lot. Not really a double life, but when we kicked him out, his parents came and helped him move his stuff out. I had a friend who did something similar. He worked abroad at a bar for the summer and lived with two Norwegian guys who were doing the same. They were due to move out the last day of the season and each go home, but a week early he came back to find that they had left, and they'd taken everything of value he owned. He went to their workplaces to try and find out more, but the people there had never heard of them, and they didn't move in the same circles, so he was never able to find out more. Upon talking about it recently, he said that he doesn't even know if they were Norwegian, not that it matters, but he strongly suspected everything he knew about them was a complete lie. Names, home stories, the lot. 
Story 3. So my brother was married to the same gal for 21 years. Around year 19, it was apparent my sister-in-law wasn't happy and was planning to move on. Until my brother came down with cancer. She wouldn't leave him while undergoing chemotherapy and surgeries, but a leave was inevitable. So my brother is home one day, and my sister-in-law is at the gym. The SWAT team breaks down the door, throws my brother on the ground, handcuffed him, and held him at gunpoint. They were looking for my sister-in-law to arrest her for CP, CR, endangering children, etc. SWAT ended up arresting her at the gym while my brother was being held at the house. Skip some details, and it came out my sister-in-law was having several affairs and is now serving 25 years in state prison as she confessed to the CP, CR, and endangering. We also found out she was doing it with a family dog by pictures found on her personal computer. She was the daughter-in-law my mother had always wished for, and no one knew she was living this double life for the last two years before she went to prison. Update. Obviously ripped my inbox. I wanted to also say thank you to the unbelievable number of you people who sent me private messages with concern and advice regarding my nieces because you'd been abused yourself. You are the true heroes to feel the compassion and compulsion to write to me and to share your stories. How did you and your family react when you found out? This is freaking crazy. Well, sister-in-law was also a preschool teacher, so the initial shock pretty quickly turned to an, oh my god, how deep will this run sort of thing. My brother stayed up all night to be at the daycare where she worked when it opened to talk to the director personally, so when it hit the news, the daycare wasn't blindsided. Turned out, the CP she was sharing were pics she was taking of their daughters. The R charge was added after they went through her computer and phone, found out that she was R-ing her own daughter, and then sending videos over the internet. This came out at the same time we learned about the family dog. My brother is still in therapy, and my mother cried for weeks. The story made the national news. Story 4. I worked with this guy once who was known for his stories. No matter how loose the connection was, he'd find a way to turn anything into a personal anecdote of a thing he'd seen or done before. All of them were interesting the first time. He'd lived an interesting life, grown up in America, moved to Australia in his early 20s, worked in a lot of really cool places over the years. But it wasn't long before he started repeating the same stories over and over again. I worked with him for just over three years, so it got pretty ridiculous. We knew how he'd met his wife, all the obscure things he owned, his pets, his kids. We knew every detail of his life. It became a bit of an in-joke within the office about how the guy never shut up. Then one day he didn't come in. He had passed away of a heart attack. The whole office was at a loss, especially our little department, which had about eight people in it, including him. When it came to his funeral, our little group took the afternoon off and attended. And that's how we found out none of his stories were true. He'd grown up locally. His family wasn't at all who we thought they were. None of his old jobs had happened. Everything we'd known about him had just been made up. The most interesting thing for me was that at one point, our boss needed someone to head to China to double-check something in person at one of our company's factories. When the usual choices couldn't do it, he was picked. It seemed like a no-brainer, since he was regularly going to and from America to visit family and had traveled a lot on his other jobs. We now think that may have been his first time overseas. How bizarre. Did it change how you view him at all? Like, if you had found out some other way that didn't involve him passing away, do you think you would still consider him a friend? My ex was a pathological liar, and I feel like this sometimes. Did I even know him? Does he even count as my boyfriend? Because the guy I thought I was dating technically never existed. Story 5. Well, this is a salient question to stumble on today. Nutshell background, about seven years ago, my brother was struggling with addiction, using almost any and everything, though alcohol was the DOC, drug of choice, we have a really long family history of alcohol use disorders. He dropped out of school and spent a few years bouncing around treatment centers and sober living houses. Three years ago, he decided to move back, about two hours away from my parents' house, and get back into school. At this point, he's a lot older than the kids in his classes, and socializing is hard, so he would come up to see the parents every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He decided to go for a chemistry degree. Every semester, talking about his specific classes, the content of them, etc., he knew the class times, professors, talked about teaching styles, and, like clockwork, brought his dog to my parents for finals week twice a year so he could study without distraction. My entire family came from all across the country for his graduation ceremony on Friday. 
We were all bursting with pride and excitement because my brother had just done what we all thought was impossible and graduated. Pre-ceremony, none of us could find his name in the book. Then we couldn't find him walking among the students. About 30 minutes into the ceremony, I got a call from him. He was drunk. Turns out he never enrolled back into school. He just moved back, conned my parents into paying rent and utilities for three years, and spent four days a week boozing, gaming, and sleeping. No one knew this was going on. He invested so much into this double life that he had his whole family and all his friends fooled. We're not sure what the next steps are. My husband and I are going to help my parents pack up his place tomorrow. It's hard to find hope with the level of deceit that went into his latest stint. He's hurt so many people on this path. But he's my brother, and I love him nonetheless. Here's to a brighter tomorrow. Thanks for letting me word vomit and process this a bit more. Story 6. My sister-in-law had a second child. She was still married, but separated from her husband because she caught him cheating. The man with whom she had the baby was her father's old prodigy, who was also married with a couple of kids. This all took place in China, while the one-child policy was in full effect. So, to her parents, the separation and affair were secret up until she had a baby. Once they were looped in, they helped her to maintain the lies because, face, from her ex-husband's perspective, the child and the affair were secret. From the perspective of his family, with whom she remained in touch, the separation, affair, and baby were secret. This was complicated by the fact that they shared custody of their first kid. In fact, they pretended they were still living together for years. So the older kid was warned not to mention his brother to his father while spending plenty of time with both. It was all a secret from most, but not all of their close family, that is, cousins, aunts, and uncles, and then there was the prodigy's family, and really the rest of the outside world, for whom there was no separation, no affair, and certainly no kid. That included the government. I'm not even sure how that worked. She wasn't living another life. She was living fractals of lives within lives. Just try to imagine the logistics of getting your non-existent kid to school, under a false identity, in time to pick up your older kid, who was waiting with your secret lover so that he could get back to his real family and you and your kid could meet up with your cheating ex-husband so that you could all drive together to lunch with family from both sides doing your best impression of a perfect platonic family who had come straight from a shared loving home, while being careful that neither you nor your older boy mentioned to anyone that you have to pick up your other son from school soon. Now I've got a headache. Story 7. Guy I used to work with, he lived in a small country town with his wife and three kids. When he was fired from his job, where I worked, he could only find something at his level in the big city two hours away. So he would go to work in the city Monday to Friday and home to his wife and kids on the weekends. This went on for years. It came out about five years into the arrangement that he wasn't living in the small crappy city apartment as he said, he was living with his girlfriend and their two kids. So he had a wife and three kids and a girlfriend with two kids, all his. Apparently, the girlfriend knew about the wife, but the wife had no idea about the girlfriend. And his three country kids had two younger siblings that they knew nothing about. It, of course, blew up spectacularly. The wife kicked him out, and he went to live with the girlfriend. Six months later, she was sick of him and kicked him to the curb, too. So now he pays child support for five kids to two different women and is actually living in that small crappy apartment. The balls on him must have been huge. I mean, it was in the city, not the little country town, but the city isn't that big. Eventually, someone who knew him, his wife, his kids, was going to run into him with a girlfriend, or in a place he isn't supposed to be, or just something. I actually can't remember how he got outed. I think the wife went to visit the small crappy apartment and found the other woman there. I got my info through a small scuttlebutt, so I could be wrong. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 8. Not exactly a double life, but my cousin was a secret for four years. My uncle was 21 and he and his girlfriend had a baby without telling anyone in our large, very nosy family. No one suspected a thing and they went on dating. When I was 8 and their daughter was 4, her adoptive parents passed away in a fire and left in their will that they wanted her to go back to her biological parents. My uncle and his girlfriend sincerely regretted giving their daughter up, and so they were thrilled. Everyone just went with the fact that they were essentially keeping a secret child for four years and were pretty much okay with it. My cousin is 14 now, and she has two full siblings, and my aunt and uncle are great parents. Every now and again, someone brings up the situation, but it's pretty much just laughed off. I do find it a little odd, though. This is what I understand of the story. I don't know any more than what my mom told me, and the few things my cousin has said. 
so I don't know how the adoption worked, really. Also, when I said they laugh about it, they don't laugh about the tragedy of my cousin losing her adoptive parents. They laugh about how none of them thought to question why my uncle was acting so odd, you know, over losing a child and all. Currently, my cousin doesn't seem to be screwed over the situation, but it'll be something she has to deal with when she's a bit older. Aside from the little girl tragically losing her adoptive parents at four years old, this ended up being a sweet story. Fortunate stroke of serendipity, except for, you know, those people passing away in the fire. Story 9. My family hosted a number of exchange students while we were growing up. We hosted about seven high school students over the course of my childhood. Each stayed for a year in our house, attended high school in our town, etc. One girl, Irenia, from Russia, came to us no differently than any of the other students had, through the AFS program. To be a student through AFS meant you had to fill out an application, be 17 to 18 years old, be attending high school in your home country, whatever. So Irina arrives as our exchange student. She goes to high school in our small hometown on Cod, Massachusetts. But at Christmas time, she says she has to go home to Russia because her mother was extremely sick. Going home during the exchange year is really unusual, really rare. So, okay, fine. She's going to Russia for the Christmas break. No big deal. She'll be back in January. Except she never comes back. AFS can't find her. We don't know where she is. If she made it to Russia. If she's hurt, nothing. And we're terrified because we're her host family during this year and we always took the students in like family. Anyways, she's gone. Maybe three months later, my mom is driving through our tiny town, again, middle of nowhere, Cape Cod, and she sees Irina with what looks like her mom and some other kids. Turns out Irina has graduated high school in Russia already, was like 25, with children, and had posed as an exchange student so she could case the place before bringing the rest of her family. Can you imagine being a 25-year-old mom and going to classes every day with 17-year-olds pretending to be a teen? Sounds like a wacky movie. Story 10. My grandmother passed away a couple years ago. While going through her house, my family found a box with my grandfather's name on it in his handwriting. My grandfather passed before I was born, it was taped closed, and the dust on it suggested it hadn't ever been opened. Inside, my family found newspaper clippings and other documents. Turns out that in the early 1900s, my grandfather took a road trip with friends to see the ocean. During their time at the beach, their car was stolen. They decided to stay a while. Being in their late teens and out of school, they decided to earn some money and have a good time. My grandfather met a Mexican girl and married her within the course of a month. There was an article on vehicle theft, as well as another on marriage and a marriage certificate. We could never find information on what happened next. We don't even rightly know if they married for love, to get her citizenship, if they had kids, or even if he was legally divorced when he married my grandmother in the 1930s. We don't think my grandmother knew. We did find out her first wife returned to Mexico. She did have children, who say they don't think their mom had kids before she remarried, we sent them copies of the documents we found, and they were as flabbergasted as we were. Story 11. There was one dad in our mother's group that lost his high-flying big city financial job due to a market crash. To pay the bills, and because there were no jobs in finance at the time, he took the first job he could get, in a chicken abattoir. Bit of a change from a desk job to slaughtering chickens, but when you have a newborn baby and bills to pay, you step up. I know that sounds crazy. It's a group of new moms that meet weekly to swap war stories about newborns, and occasionally there would be a barbecue or something that the dads would come to as well. Every time I ran into him, I was always impressed with how much he was up to speed on current events and world news. We would talk about the latest political, financial, and scientific news. There was not much discussion about chicken butchering. Turns out he was fired on his first day. Every day after that, for months, he would leave home in the morning, go to the pub, read newspapers all day, and then go home in the evening. She eventually found out they're divorced now. Why didn't he just look for a new job? Story 13. There was this kid at our church who started attending the youth group when he was about 15. Everyone loved him, but he was always a little standoffish. Fast forward three years to graduation time. Everyone kept asking him what he planned to do after high school and if he was looking forward to it, but he always changed the subject. Finally, he revealed to one of the adults that he wasn't graduating because he hadn't been to school since he was eight years old. His dad removed him from school and never let him return. A whole bunch of stuff went down after that, but the church members helped him do a fast-track uh, high school degree in three years and have now paid for him to attend a four-year university. That has an amazing ending. I was just wondering, how can you have an unschooled child at that age and not get caught? We live in a fairly large city. 
The dad just didn't re-enroll him at school and never returned. It is illegal, though, and so the dad got into a lot of legal trouble after the truth came out. The son ended up going to live with a family at the church. Story 14. Fellow grad student has two young kids, one that is struggling to walk and communicate and is in the process of being diagnosed. She is polling 10- to 16-hour days, between interning and classes, plus being a mom and wife. She gets a call from a friend that expresses how excited she is to see her at the husband's work party. What? She didn't RSVP? And her husband said he would pop over for less than an hour, then come home to be with her for a quiet dinner. Turns out he was bringing a date that wasn't her. They had been seeing each other for about six months, and even had taken a trip together under the pretense of a business trip. Any time he had been late or gone, we assumed he was with her. Friend did her a solid and took a couple pics for the divorce lawyer. Why would he bring his side chick to a party her friends attended? When we found out, we said exactly that. Pretty much wanted to get caught and end the marriage. Story 15. A counselor at my college in Michigan faked his identity for over 40 years. He was a civil rights organizer in San Francisco in the 1960s and ended up in a shootout with police. None of the police were injured, but he was shot in the foot apparently. He was supposed to appear in court later, but he took off and in the 40 plus years following the shooting, he earned his master's degree with a whole new identity, ultimately working as a guidance counselor at a community college in Michigan. His true identity was exposed around 2010, and he went on trial for the shooting in California. He was sentenced to a year in jail and about $8,000 in fines. He was a nice guy. You'd never expect anybody who's seemingly normal actually being an old-school fugitive on the run. Story 16. In one of my previous jobs a few years ago, we hired this guy who turned out to be a really good partner, worked hard, never complained. After about a year and a half of working with him, I get called into the office. He's there with the manager, assistant manager, and two beefy guys in normal clothes, with the exception of earpieces. He wanted to say goodbye to the bosses, and I explained why he had to leave the company. Turned out he was the son of some leader in his country, and they had to relocate him, an opposing faction found out he was in our state and would have kidnapped him for leverage. Story 17. My, the Netherlands, great-grandfather's family had an inkling that no amount of prosperity was worth risking what Hitler was spreading. He took his wife and four sons on a boat, settled in the Illinois-Wisconsin border to just find middle classism as skilled carpenters and other building tradesmen. The family didn't realize till nearly 1970 that the house they just left without selling in Holland, the Jewish family of husband, wife, and four boys who lived next door moved in without asking, called themselves my family name, first and last. The local Protestant church had them every Sunday. They survived the Holocaust. Has any greater accidental zero-effort hero ever happened? That is an amazing story. Really cool. Was anything ever written about it? Yes, a comment on the internet, I believe. Art without meaning. Story 18. My uncle runs a business hooking up the internet in hotels. He travels all over the West Coast in it, and recently he asked my aunt to have an open relationship. Turns out most of his business trips were actually trips to go meet with his business partner, whom he has been having an affair with for the last year or two. This business partner has even had two pregnancies with my uncle. Both were miscarriages, but both were also intentional. My aunt and uncle have been married for 12 years and have a five-year-old son. My aunt also has terminal cancer. He's been introducing their son to his mistress as their son's new mommy without my aunt's knowledge. Needless to say, that open relationship isn't happening. They're getting divorced. Story 19. My grandfather was in a romantic relationship with another man across the country for a few decades. My entire family knew about it, so it was no big deal, or so we thought. Just last October, my grandfather passed away. We went to call his partner, and he was very surprised to learn that my grandfather had children. It's amazing how he hid an entire family for decades. Took me a few reads to figure out that you were the secret family. Maybe I should go to bed. Story 20. A well-respected family of two teachers with two cute kids. The husband at the high school and the wife at the elementary school in the fairly high-income town they lived in. Turns out the wife was dealing drugs without husband knowing, got busted at school, cops showed up to elementary and high school, lost her job, and they got divorced, and she moved away. Sounds like a Netflix show. Heck yeah, I'm glad you prevailed. Sounds like she couldn't give a care. Story 21. Earlier this year, I learned my dad has been addicted to heroin and stolen many expensive things from various members of my family. I knew that people had been getting things stolen from them, but never even began to think it was my dad. He did get help and is now five months clean, 
but still working and building up my family's trust again. I'm so sorry. Glad he's clean now. All the best. Story 22. A friend of mine lives in San Diego and was recently telling me the story of her grandfather who has an entire family in Mexico that he kept hidden for decades. I'm talking he has kids that have kids and one of his secret granddaughters has another kid. Dude is a great grandfather and nobody knew. Her grandfather is nearly 90, so it's unbelievable how much a quiet old man can keep from people. Story 23. I'll save the backstory. A good friend's father was found out to be huge in the propane trade. Not like a dealer on the streets, but smuggling into the country and helping distribute in California. The dad was a real normal dude and very family-oriented and present. He's in prison now. Blew my mind. Story 24. We had a guy in high school who faked a deep voice for the eight or seven years we've known him, and senior year, he revealed that it wasn't his real voice. Coming from a guy who does voice work for a living, I cannot imagine how hard it must have been to have kept that going for so long. I'm surprised he was able to pull it off. I'm also so curious what even the motivation was for doing this. Story 25. When you ask for the taco, but life gives you the burrito. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.